Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. gentlemen welcome to another edition the first 2023 edition of stay busy with armand sadler happy new year to you all again like i said it is not too late to say it maybe by like january 10th january 11th 12th area like you've you probably it's beyond the time 2023 is 2023 is basically already over by like january 12th so you can stop saying it then but anyways it's of course armand sadler vegan chorizo poppy founder of Ball nigga ballers, I am excited to be here for our first episode of 2023. And of course, I got to give some shout outs. Uh, Shout out to the listeners, of course, for tapping in. I hope you all had a great holiday season, got the gifts you wanted, gave out some gifts, ate well, slept, feel rested and recharged. Uh, Make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. The button is here for all visual episodes, YouTube shorts and past busy sessions or subscribe on your preferred audio platform. Leave a review, a like, comment, share with your friends, engage with us on social media at Stay Busy Pod on Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Um, our Patreon, of course, click the link in our bio to stay tapped in with all of our exclusive content on the Patreon or hit the link patreon.com backslash stay busy pod. Of course, shout out to the team, Nick Early in the building, executive producing at a high level as only he does. Kieran Hurley, our VP of everything. Siobhan Shields, the VP of engagement. And Aaliyah Simone, our VP of data and analytics. It's a new year, but we got the same sponsor. Shout out to Curve Lab. Curve Lab is a wellness company with the mission of creating a healthier world through vitals, training, and recovery services. Vitals is the athletic loungewear of Curve Lab, and their newly released Trial 2 collection pushes the message, money means nothing from a hospital bed. Check out the pieces out now at CurveLab.com. That's Curve with a K. And use a discount code, stay busy, all caps, no spaces, uh, for a discount on your purchase. Today I'm wearing the Stone Vital T. Again, they're three for three, super comfortable. I'm rocking it with the Air Forces, some white Air Forces. It, it, it works pretty well, you know, real light, light colors, neutral colors. Um, I'm, I'm loving it. Curve Lab is, uh, has blessed my closet. So you get the Stone Vital T, you get the French Terry sweatsuit I had, get the, the, the baby blue one I had. The Curve Lab is doing their thing with the clothing. But... We couldn't start 2023 without a bang, and we've got an incredible guest here. And for me, like, there's something to be said about someone who can build communities within communities. Not everyone is meant to be a leader. Some people rely on the platforms that they gain from being associated with large entities. But this guest has made a name for himself by elevating the names of others through his Twitch streams, playing artist music, his Fresh Picks playlist on Audio Mac, and being the director of AR at Genius. Now, he also manages three artists, um, and he finds a time to do so and be here potting while being an amazing husband and dog dad. Like, the way that he can do that is beyond me, but I'm thankful to have the founder of Kayvon's House, a vibrant Discord community of over 4,000 people here in the Busyverse. Welcome, Kayvon Durage. I didn't even cry with that intro. It's too nice. <laughs> it's too nice. I don't do well with compliments. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, oh man, we're gonna that practice so, it today, man. So nice. It's, it's, it's good to have you here. No, I'm, ha- thanks. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you came here fitted up too. You did oh, you dress to impress? I, I have to be honest. My wife uh, has dressed me. Hey, that's that. She's also my stylist. I say this to everybody. My wife is my stylist. So if you like what I wear and you need a stylist, hit me up. Mm-hmm. I got you. <laughs> it, it, it comes with the territory. My my girl hosts me with my fits too, so uh, that's kind of that's, that's how it's got to be, man. But uh, how how are you? How how the, how's the holidays? How you feeling about twenty twenty three? Holidays were good, maybe too short. Uh, twenty twenty three is is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, if I'm being honest, it feels like because there's a lot that I want to do, right? So mm-hmm. there's, there's a lot of things that I want to do with with the Discord community, with Twitch, like. For me, it's a lot of thinking about like improvements and how to move forward. And yeah. so I think honestly, like even in the break, like in my mind, it was just 
all right, what am I doing next year? Like, can I get these end of year lists like done before the end of the year? Yeah. Um, can I make an extra, can I squeeze one more playlist in before <laughs> New, Year's, New Year's Eve? Yeah. Uh, so I wish I could say that I was arrested, but honestly, like I feel like I'm here and I'm trying to get to here by the end of the year. Uh, and the older that. I get, the more, the, I think the steeper the hill gets, <laughs> maybe? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel that, I feel that. Well, we're going to get into everything that you do, but of course, uh, we want to get into a fun whether you like. So whether you like Discord or Slack, Big ZD or Mac, Converses or Vans, and Haters or Stands. So for you, do you prefer Discord or Slack? Definitely Discord. Slack is is terrible. <laughs> I, I have to use Slack at work, right? Yeah, so right. Like, so like I, I hate Slack. Like yeah. There's nothing... The the sound of a Slack message oh, it is haunts triggering. Me. haunts me in my nightmares. <laughs> it haunts me in my sleep. Like You, you, you got, got to mute it. So like. Discord. Discord is joy. I, I actually don't even mind hearing the Discord notifications. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when they are pinging from other servers, like on my computer's in the other room, I'm like, I got to go mute mm-hmm. that shit. Yeah. Um, I can, oh, sorry, I can curse it, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's cool, it's cool. Because okay, cool. cool. I, I do have a, I have a, a very poor... Potty mouth? Yeah, I have a potty mouth. <laughs> good. My parents will be upset about it, but it just is who I am at this <laughs> point. So. so good. Yeah, I, I prefer Discord. So I remember like years ago I used it. I don't remember what I used it for. I didn't stay on it long, and then I joined this wrestling Discord. <laughs> we were talking about wrestling earlier, where we just like, we post wrestling news, we talk about the shows, all that. And I was like, yo, this is a really dope app. And then I started using like the voice chat when I would yeah. play games with my friends. And, oh, I use that You know, time. setting up the bots, and they can like auto-play music and stuff. Discord's awesome. It's, it's really great. So. I wish that I was better at the technical side of it. That's mm-hmm. something I Actually, I'm looking for a, like a technical moderator who mm. can just help with the tech side because like I'm my my knowledge of all this stuff is very rudimentary. It's just mm-hmm. been like get in, figure it out, like play with stuff, see yeah. what I can do, and then like figure out how I can improve it as I go. Mm-hmm. Um, but I use it for the same things. Like I, you know, now that Call of Duty has uh, what is it? What's it called? Proximity, Proximity chat. chat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. While well, I'm in Discord, every time we're playing, I'm not <laughs> trying to get caught yeah. out here being heard by another team and then getting pulled up on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I use it for that. I, mm-hmm. Some of the features that I haven't used yet that I think would, would be cool, like the the ability to like watch things, and yeah. have, like watch parties and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems really cool. I I did like a little listening party in it last year mm-hmm. uh, where we like played all the music and then just it was like a mini interview with an artist about their project and that was really fun. So yeah. this year that's something that I'm trying to do more of as well. For sure, for sure. Are you a big ZD guy or a mac and cheese guy? So I am gluten free and lactose intolerant. Oh geez, um, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but if I had to pick one, it would probably be mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. I don't think that would have always been my answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, my wife has put me on to some good mac and cheese, and mm-hmm. now I am a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I make a, I make a good one. I made it for the first time in a while over the holidays for New Year's Eve, and I, I got to the party late, so I, I, I put it there after people had eaten, so I was like looking to see if people were gonna take it, and no one took it. I was like, damn, is my mac and cheese trash? And then once they started drinking, they all got into it, and oh, it was, yeah, it was yeah. done within an hour. I was like, okay, cool, I still got it, I still got it. So definitely a mac and cheese guy. Now, Converse's or Vans? Definitely Vans, mm-hmm. only because, and again, I was not a Vans person until probably like a year and a half ago, right? Wow, okay. My wife. Has always been a Vans person. <laughs> I have generally been a Converse, like Chuck Taylor's kind of person. Mm-hmm. But if I'm being real, I hate how hot they make my feet. Yeah. And I hate how fucking difficult they are to get on. They are not easy. Like, know? what's up with that? Yeah. So, yeah. slip on Vans. Wow. The mm-hmm. most convenient and comfortable shoe I think I've ever worn in my life. Fans, if you want to slide me a sponsorship, please <laughs> feel free to send me some free ones. I'll wear them. Yeah. I remember in high school when, like, the Wiz Khalifa, uh, Taylor Gang era, when everyone oh, yeah, was yeah. getting Converse's, and then Tyga was one of the people making Vans pop in, so I got, like, my first pairs then. And I think I started a Converse guy, and then I became a Vans guy, and I wore Vans more so uh, the rest of the years. Now I don't really wear it either, but if I had to pick, I'd probably be a Vans guy. There's I- nothing, nothing like a good, like – Red pair or a black pair, like the classic, classic yeah. bands. And then I had like a checkered red and black one too. Th- those were those were my shit for a couple years. Too. Do you remember the song Vans by the Pack? Yeah, yeah that yeah. was probably. I didn't even know what Vans were until that point. Because, <laughs> like, if I'm being honest, I didn't really think about Vans in England. Like, mm-hmm. when you're a kid in England, like the only shoes that you wear are, are football shoes. Right. That's it. Like I, all the time, wearing Astro Toe shoes to school. Like I'm, I'm ready to just play <laughs> on the crazy. playground. Yeah, like just ridiculous. <laughs> so like, I, honestly, like it's that and like. Air Forces, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, I, when I was a kid, it was just that. And then when I moved here, I, 
I was kind of I don't know what shoes to wear. Yeah. I think the first pair of shoes that I got when I moved to this country was a pair of Timberlands. Mm. You need them in New York. Need them. In <laughs> don't New York. need them in North Carolina. Definitely not. I was, I was gonna say, yeah. Like, <laughs> probably <laughs> a were hot then too. <laughs> probably a foolish purchase <laughs> to make in North Carolina. But also, like when I was growing up, I was just like such a huge fan of like American culture. Yeah. So like I think it was like you know like. I, to be real, like I was listening to like G Unit and like mm. Eminem and Fifty Cent and like all the shit. And, like yeah, yeah, thought I needed a pair of Tims because Fifty Cent was wearing Tims. Yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And lastly, this one is the, I think this will be an interesting one. Haters or stands? You prefer haters or do you prefer stands? It's a tough one. Mm-hmm. I mean, st- stands is nice, right? Like it's yeah. a good thing. Mm-hmm. Stands can engagement. get annoying though, <laughs> and yeah, ha- hating is fun sometimes. <laughs> like it's like I'm I'm a stand of things. I'm a hater of things. But if I had to be in a room of stands or a room of haters, it would depend on the level of stands. There's like level one stands who just like love things, but they're not annoying about it. And there's like level five where like you can't say anything even slightly negative about someone. But like a hater, haters are funny. I would enjoy to be at the play a haters ball specifically. Oh, absolutely. That's oh, it. man. <laughs> that, oh, man. That's it. Dave Chappelle so, made haters seem so just, I was like, yeah, I aspire to be a play hater. This was hilarious. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Who's, who's your favorite character in that skit? Ah, I don't know, man. Um, what is, dude? I don't know his name. He's the shorter, bold guy. Shorter, bold. Oh, uh, Donna Rawlings played beautiful. He, he played. He played like a. He's he's also been a baby in a bunch of skits. Yes. Yeah. 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 That was that was one of his constant guys. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> Buck Nasty was great. Uh, I, th- I, th- I think he'd won the year prior to that. Uh, <laughs> Silky Johnson was just incredible. Was, that's a great and skit. Charlie Murphy in anything, also. Oh, he, yeah, he yeah, Put Charlie yeah. Murphy in any skit. I'm going to enjoy yeah, Charlie Murphy. A legend, skit. a legend. <laughs> um, let's get into this chat. I, I, I don't know if you've you felt this way. I feel like as we get older, obviously, like, we're humans and our mortality is real. But, mm-hmm. like, I feel like the years has been starting with deaths, more often, which like really sucks. It's like, you know, you're excited for a new year and then you see get Gangsta Boo passed yep. or Fred White from Earth, Wind and Fire passed. And it's like, shit, that, that fucking sucks. Like, I don't want to think about death like right when when the year begins. Um, and Gangsta Boo is important, of course, for the listeners who don't know. Second female member of 3-6 Mafia. She left in 2002. Over the course of her career, she worked with Ye- Yellow Wolf, Run the Jewels and Eminem. Recently worked with Lotto and Glorilla on Fuck the Club Up, and she had popular tracks like Where Them Dollars At, Mass to My Face, Big Mama, and Stamina. Now, she passed at the age of 43, too, which also really sucked. Like, Black Don't Crack is real, and, you know, I, I want to see my, my people live yep. for a long time. And 43, like, that's she's still young. Like, still, you know, still still got time to go, still kicking. And we don't know the cause of death yet, but um, it's a really tough way to open the year up and see that, so... Go ahead. I, I was gonna say I feel like a part of it too is like as as we get older, it's it's more people we know. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I, yeah. I think, and also it's just like you you start to think about it more. I think the older you get to, it's like it's more present and thinking about the. I'm a uh, this is gonna be weird because I'm a very pessimistic person. I can be like a little like negative at times. Okay, <laughs> but the way I look at life, right, it's a very fleeting thing. Yeah. Just in general, like yeah. our our existence as human beings on this planet is a snap of the fingers yeah. in like time as a whole, right? So it's just, I I never really thought about that when I was a kid, because time moves so slow when you're young. Mm-hmm. It feels like you never you you're never gonna be older. Like you want to be there so quick, mm-hmm. but I, I realize the older that I get, how fast time feels like it moves now. Mm-hmm. In comparison, I think that's why it it feels like such a heavier thing. Yeah, because it's really something that's like present. It's mm-hmm. like, fuck, like I gotta do all this shit before I, before something happens. I gotta take care of my health. Like I gotta really actively like make sure that I can be here and do these things that I want to do in the yeah. time that I have. If someone put it in perspective for me on Twitter, he was like, you know, when you turn two, like, a year is literally half of your lifespan. But then when you're 27, a year is a 27th of, of your lifespan. So it feels like, I, like, literally when December hit, I was like, yo, 2022 felt so fast. He was like, yeah, so I mean, because you've just lived through so much that a year really doesn't, it's not a, not a long time. It feels like it, but it really isn't a long time. So that, like, really, like, hit a, a light bulb, went off my head. I was like, wow, that's, like, a real fact. Like, I'm 27 now. Like, yeah, a year is really nothing. <laughs> so. The, the other thing I was going to say is, like, I didn't really notice this until I started working in media, right? And I started mm-hmm. interviewing really young, talented people who passed away too early. Yeah. And I think that's the other really heartbreaking part about it for me is, like, knowing that 
the potential of somebody was lost before it was reached. Like I think I think that for me is maybe the the worst part about losing people young, losing people is like just knowing how much they could have done, yeah. How many people they could have impacted, yeah. And how much they didn't get to finish. Yeah, like Juice Road and Pop Smoke immediately come yeah. to mind. Like those mm-hmm. are those are tough because I was fans of them, and it's just like when when you hear their age, you're like, what the fuck, man? Like 100, percent 21, 20 years old. Like that's Juice was my that was my first experience with that. Yeah. Um, because I like I did his interviews at Genius, and like so I spent I don't know like probably two three hours with him that day, just mm-hmm. like talking to him about his songs, and he was such a nice kid. Yeah. Like, and you could just tell like he had it. You yeah. know what I mean? And and. It, after that, it was kind of like a succession of artists that I interviewed or booked or like spent time with that then it was like they just passed away really young. And that for me has been one of the toughest and weirdest things to to just wrap my head around yeah. is like the idea that these people's potential and like all the people that they touched as well. Like yeah, it's man. like, ah. Yeah, 100%. Um, also got a shout out um, or rather offer condolences to Fred White, drummer for Earth, Wind & Fire. Uh, one of the early members of the group, of course, they're known for track September, Let's Groove, All After the Love Is Gone. He also played drums for Donny Hathaway's live album. Earth, Wind & Fire was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, in 2000. And uh, Fred White passed at the age of 67. So he got to he got to live, you know, a good life. But um, still, it's just uh, it's it's tough. It's really tough to you know, read about these moments and see, you know, people around you that are affected by them yeah. and just like, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I have, I tell people this, like I have like an irrational fear of death, which I know I shouldn't because it's inevitable, but I, I just don't like it. Like it, it just really doesn't sit well with me. Um, so I try really to, tough. this is again, this is, you know, this is a very morbid topic to be talking about, but I, I came to terms with it mm-hmm. and I guess in my own way recently. So I, I lost my uncle, two and a half years ago, my grandmother two years ago, or last year, last Christmas, right? Yeah. And I had already talked a hard time with it. Like, I have, I have a hard time with loss. I have a hard time with change, if I'm being honest. Um, but I I don't know. I found myself just being like, you know, like, I don't, I don't know what's next, mm-hmm. Ruri. You know what I mean? Like, sure, it's the end of whatever this is yeah. on this planet. But honestly, sometimes being on this planet sucks. Very true. So, like, there's, what's to say that what's next isn't just better? Better, right. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that was how I came to terms with, like, I, I'm not a very religious person. I don't read. I don't know what happens after people pass away. But, yeah. like, at the same time, I, I, I guess, like, I, I can't. When it came to it, I couldn't be like, oh, well, there's no way that it'll be better. Right. What if it is? Yeah. We and I, I kind of found peace in that idea that, like, maybe whatever is next is something else. Maybe it's something we can't understand. Maybe it's something that we we can't fathom at all. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because of whatever the rules of our physics are and, like, <laughs> our planet and, like, the, the bodies that we're in. But, yeah. like, that was how I came to terms with it. I, yeah. I did have a really hard time with it, but I think when I started to think about it like that, I was like, well, what what is next? Like, what yeah. if? Yeah, no, that's a good perspective. So yeah, I want to offer condolences and love to the families of, you know, those we lost, the fans of those um, who we lost. And um, yeah, it just sucks that we have to keep dealing with it. But, you know, <clears throat> we do, we live and we can honor their memories. Getting to something a little lighter. This uh, could be good news depending on who you are and how you felt about the situation. Tory Lanes, we got him. We got him. <laughs> we, we fucking got him. <laughs> Tory Lanez is found guilty on all three charges, assault with a semi-automatic handgun, carrying a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle, discharging a firearm with gross negligence. Now, in the time since he was found guilty, his, j- it was, his call from jail leaked. He called Meg's friend, Kelsey Harris, and he sounded real apologetic over the phone. He sounded real guilty of something. So, um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But you don't make phone calls like that if you're not. Yeah, yeah. So, um, definitely didn't look good for him. And then x-ray photos of uh, Meg's foot leaked. You could see the bullet fragments in her foot. So, for, for, again, and I just... I really have to laugh at you people who are just who are just so doubtful. Like, y- y- y'all are skeptical to, like, a fault that is just, like, beyond... Ration and logic, like y'all just doubt every single thing, and now look at you, now look at you, and then I was in like, and these these are some. Uh, unfortunately, I I I end up in a lot of group chats with people who just think very differently, <laughs> <laughs> and and it's annoying, and everyone's just like, oh well, I'm still gonna listen to Playboy, I'm still gonna great, keep listening, I I don't care, but just know, for the last two and a half years, you was defending someone who. 
got caught up. So that's something you're going to have to cope with. You're going to have to deal with. Like, there was people really upset. They were like, there's no way. Like, there was a petition made on change.com. Got Stop. like 60,000 signatures to appeal the verdict. I'm like, yeah, one, this isn't really how you do it. And two, hey, man, you know, oh. wh- whatever helps you out cope with the situation. But mostly, I'm glad that it's over. Meg can heal. I don't have to deal with these Facebook forensic scientists and you still gonna have to deal with them. That's still yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Just not with not like yeah. Actually, we're still gonna have to deal with it with this situation because people are still doubtful. Yeah. But I'm uh, glad we're on the same page. I was a little worried when you sent the Rona show over. I was like, fuck. What if I am like on the complete opposite oh, page, brother, in brother. this conversation? What am I gonna say? Yeah, nah, nah. I mean, you know, I'm glad we're on the same page. But though, it's because you really never know. Like, like it's some of the most like. <laughs> rational people I know were on his side. And I was like, oh, wow. I, I, <laughs> I did not know this oh, about wow. you. Like, like, okay. Hmm. Interesting. So you really learn a lot about people through uh, certain situations. But, uh, yeah, you do. This, this year, last year, I guess, last year was very telling. Yeah. There were a lot of situations about yeah. how people feel about certain things. Yeah, very, yeah. very, very telling. But uh, <laughs> needless to say, we got him. <laughs> so his sentencing, his sentencing, sentencing will take place this month. And uh, he's facing up to 22 years and deportation. So, yeah, lock him up in Canada. Keep him over there. Um, I, I don't want to say Godspeed. I don't want to say rest and piss because that would be kind of rude. But, yeah, just, I don't know. Whatever, dude. Um, another music's not that good anyway. <laughs> yeah. This like, is a hot take by me. I, no, like, I'm fine. not. A, I'm it's not a fine. huge story. Like, like, I don't know. When, when everyone's, like, freaking out about it, it's like, so? Right, Yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't know. There's like maybe one Tory Lane song I can think of that I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, that's a good song. Like, I'm not going to front. The, the, there were projects I liked, but it was so easy to stop listening to him. Like, it was as easy to stop listening to, like, as as it was to stop listening to R. Kelly. Like, so easy. Oh, just, yeah, super to just, so I was easy. like, there's so many other artists. <laughs> like, I, I don't need this music. Like, did I like it? Yeah, but I don't I don't need this music, so. There's also a bunch of artists from Toronto who sound very similar. Yeah, on, too, honestly, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, a lot, a lot of people who sample stuff, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I, don't, I, I don't need this Proud Family flip that much, man. <laughs> but I guess y'all do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Speaking of uh, things not needed, uh, Bad Bunny apparently threw a fan's phone. The fan tried to take a selfie, and uh, Bad Bunny said, he addressed the situation, he said, anyone who comes up to me to say hello, to tell me something, or just meet me, will always receive my attention and respect, but those who come to put a damn phone in my face, I'll consider that what it is, a lack of respect, and I'll treat that the same way. Now, if I was a fan, I probably wouldn't like my phone thrown, but... Being having connected with artists, seeing how fans can get with artists. Oh yeah, I understand. Like, yo, I kind of don't want to be bothered sometimes. Like, maybe ask me to take a picture. Don't just put the phone in my face. So, you watched the video, right? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the video too, and that was the thing. Like, obviously, we don't have the context of the entire situation there because it's a very short clip. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, yeah, you got to understand artists and people too. Like, yeah. you could have just caught them on a bad day. I don't mm-hmm. want a camera in my face from somebody randomly on the street Absolutely. that I do not know who might be maybe obsessed with me a little bit. Yeah. I don't think that I would have necessarily thrown their phone yeah, into the not. into the ocean. But you know, <laughs> but I probably would have been like, "Hey, I don't want to take a photo right mm-hmm. now. Can you please, yeah, vacate my space?" Yeah, it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. But you know, people respond to things in different ways. I, I just thought it was funny. I, <laughs> I, like, Bad Bunny's gonna be fine. No one's gonna the, cancel him for this. Like, the response is the funniest. The, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, coming my phone with coming to my face with a phone. I'm gonna throw that phone. Yeah, don't 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 invade my. That's as simple as that. Like it's like you said, they're human. Um, Popcon announced. By the time you guys hear this song, will be out. But Popcon announced a song uh, featuring Drake called "We." Nick, you might have to have, have to help me pronounce this. We C A A. We kia. We kia done. We kia done. See, I'm I'm learning patois today. Um, Again, we can't really speak on the song. It's not out yet. But I don't know how big of a Drake fan you are, if at all. He was my top listen to artist this year on Spotify Raps, but I don't know if that's actually true or not. I, I knew I liked you, man. <laughs> now, in terms of the dance hall songs he's he's been a part yeah. of, what, what, what would you say is his best one? I, I went and looked last night when you sent me this because mm-hmm. I was like, I got I to gotta find the, the definitive list mm-hmm. of these songs. Uh, my first thought, I think, was probably One Dance because mm-hmm. it is... A bop. It is. My second thought was Passion Fruit, because I mm-hmm. love it, and it makes me feel like I'm floating every That's time I shit. listen to it. That's my shit. And then I went and dug a little deeper, and I think it might be Find Your Love. Mm. Mm. 
<laughs> and I'm not really sure why. It might be the nostalgia of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't like the rest of that album, really, for what it's worth. Yeah, like, Thank Me Later was, it, yeah. It's not a it's good album. his worst, yeah, like, relative worst one, yeah. But Find Your Love, I put it on last night, and it was slapping. So Fantastic. So I'm gonna, my answer is going to be Find Your Love, just because last night, when I was digging through, I was like this. Mm. Yeah, I feel that. I good. think... I think the easy answer everyone remembers Summer '16, the the trio of Controllo, Work, and yeah, One yeah. Dance. Um, but a recent one he did actually with Popcon and Party Next Door in 2020 called Twist and Turn is one of my favorites. Nice. We're in the midst of the pandemic, so we didn't get to experience that one outside. But um, remember, Nick and I went to a party called Everyday People last May, and that was like my first time really hearing the track outside in like a crowd of people, and I was like, oh yes, this is doing exactly what I knew it would do. <laughs> When I would be around people with a drink in my hand. Drink so. is outside music. Oh, of course. Honestly, I, mean, I understand why people didn't like it, because it's not sit at home and listen to music. Yeah. But when you hear it outside, it, it does feel pretty. Like, you can't be like, it doesn't feel good. And that's good. it. That, that's all I try to tell people. But I'm, I'm a stan, so you know, people people will take it with a grain of salt or, or a grain of, I don't know what to... What, the what is your favorite Drake album? More Life. More Life. More Life is my personal favorite, yeah. Really? Yeah. It did grow on me. Mm-hmm. I will say, like, when it, when it first came out, I didn't love it. But yeah. it grew on me the next year. Mm-hmm. Like, after I spent a little bit more time with it, I did enjoy it. He And he said it himself. He makes music that ages well, and people will immediately pan it if it's not what they wanted, what they expected. It's not take care or nothing was the same. But <laughs> if you sit with it for a while, like, there's, there's typically more good than bad. Yeah. Like, that's, that's all I try to say. But uh, how about you? What's your favorite Drake album? It is probably Take Care. Mm, I do feel like I have a very like personal connection to it though, and this yeah. is the thing that I always come <laughs> I back it, to is yeah. like it came out when I was like in my senior junior year of high school. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? It it just has something like just memory wise. Like it puts me in such a specific part of my life, mm-hmm. and I have such a. It's hard to describe, right? Because it's, it's just such a personal connection yeah. with the album and like where I listen to how I listen to it. So I probably would say Take Care. I feel that. Um, Though nothing was the same, I think, as, as maybe his most cohesive. Concise, yeah. You know, like, it just it has a little bit of everything. Yeah. And it also has that, like, storytelling mm-hmm. side of him that I think I really loved in, in like, the earlier days. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've had a harder time with some of the newest stuff, but, yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. There's songs. There's always songs. Yeah, my girl, she was driving me to the airport uh, a couple weeks ago, and she played Tuscan Leather, and then she was like, "Now nah, we, we got to play this whole album. <laughs> we got to play this whole album. So whole way to the airport, we listened. I was like, yeah. It's he, such an easy listen. It to. is. It is. It's, yeah. That one's a good one. Yeah, for sure. And lastly, just want to talk to you about your 2022 music takes in general. Who would you say was your artist of the year? I got to pull up the list. Come bro. on, man. I thought about it all day today. I, I was sitting here. I, I, love, I love when you come prepared. All right. <clears throat> In no particular order, mm-hmm. but this is just this was kind of like off top. Like these are some of the artists that really stood out to me last year. Harry Styles I, went crazy. Which, I don't I don't know that I was a huge Harry Styles fan before last year. Mm-hmm. My sister in law, youngest sister, put me on, sat me down, just played me a bunch of songs. I was like, wait, this is kind of amazing. Yeah, I'm like actually like really a fan. He's nice. Uh, Baby Keem. Okay. Just I, I think I'm gonna answer him for another question that we'll talk about in a second mm-hmm. as well. Uh, Burner Boy Thames. Just good taste. Uh, just, it was like a really amazing year for them in yeah. this country specifically. I mean, yeah. obviously they've been big before, but like to break into the U.S. scene, I think is a very difficult thing to do from any other country. Yeah. So to see it happen, it was just like a really cool thing this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Holly Humberstone, okay. who was from the U.K., definitely more of that like sad bedroom pop, like girl rock kind of stuff. Like, okay. That's kind of check. what I've been into recently. I'll have to check her out. Uh, Zach Fox. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with Zach. Uh, Hilarious comedian, but his mm-hmm. album that came out last year that was like more of like an R and B kind of album was actually mm-hmm. fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like I, I had no idea that he could do that. Like I've heard the rap stuff and I like the rap stuff as well, but the R and B stuff that he put out last year was exceptional. Okay, I'll have to um, check him out too. Kendrick, obviously, The Weeknd, obviously. I think both of those albums were probably two of my favorite albums that came out last year as well. Yeah, Yeet. Okay, I'm not a huge Yeet fan, mm-hmm. but I think it would be just like wrong to not say that like last year he like had an unbelievable year like yeah. the rise of eat was he's going crazy yeah like Definitely. unmatched this dude got a minions song yeah yeah like what yeah <laughs> uh tyla because i think just in the last couple of years tyla's become one of my favorite artists just creatively mm-hmm. and i really did love the album mm-hmm. like i just thought it was good i like the production I, i'm sad that i missed the tour because it mm-hmm. looked incredible yeah uh, Brent Fires, and then some UK ones: Central Sea, Nux, and Saint. I fuck with Central Sea a lot. Central Sea is amazing. Really good EP. If you like more conscious rap that has like the the really like classic like soulful production, maybe mm-hmm. a little bit more lo-fi. Nux. Nux. Okay. Unbelievable. Like really, just like I think bridges the gap between like that 
this like whole scene of like UK rap is it is not making drill or grime music mm-hmm. and this like classic US sound. So it, it it kind of is like created this new gateway almost for like UK artists to break in the US. Yeah. Which is really cool. Like I am personally like a really big fan of that. Mm-hmm. So Okay. What's your albums or album or albums of the year? Uh Again, this is a bit of a list. <clears throat> <laughs> Go ahead. Do you think? Chaos Now by Gene Dawson, probably okay. my top one. Um, I just love how he blends genres. And then I went to see him live, and it was unbelievable. Like, one of the best shows that I saw of the year. Just the energy was crazy. Like, the way that he had the crowd captivated, like, everything about it. Um, 1975 being funny in a foreign language, because it's just perfect, sad music for mm-hmm. sad people. Uh, Love and Chaos by Flower Child, another okay. really great like R and B classic R and B uh, sounding project. Nick Hakim's Comata, Love and Chaos, Flower Child. Oh, that's the Flower Child album. Some some kind of like sadder stuff too. Like there was this uh, project called Worm F- Worm Food by this artist called Cave Town. Okay, and it's it's really like again like kind of like sad singer songwriter acoustic music. But mm-hmm. like if you like that, like you'll definitely like this. Yeah. Um, Perry and Tommy, which is like UK garage. The project was called Frog Frog dot MP3. It's Frog with an E. Froge hmm. like Doge. Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean. You're giving me some homework. A lot of these I haven't heard or don't know. So some personal client stuff that I loved. Who who the fuck is Bray by Bray? But the B is in eight. Um, the Lords of Sounds and the Lesser Things by My Name Isn't J Mac, which ended up on a lot of people's end of year lists, which I'm very happy with because that was my first signing of the year. Love that. Um, Father of the Zodiac by Isaac Zale, who's one of the artists that I manage. Yeah. Holly Humberstone's Can You Afford to Lose Me, which you should have listened to. Uh, Loose in the Yakuza's Iota. Loose in the Yakuza are a French, well, it's like a French collective, but Loose is, is like the singer from Paris, and they're just so talented. Mm-hmm. Um, it's in French. It's It also goes into English a little bit. It's, it's just... I don't know how to describe it because it really feels like something unique and just like completely different. Mm-hmm. And that's, to me, I think what I love about it. Um, and then, you know, ob- I think some of the obvious ones are like SZA, Kendrick, Great album, The yeah. Weeknd, Lucky Days, Candy Drip, mm-hmm. Saba. Um, Nick was happy to hear that one. Nick loves Lucky. Oh, he's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Like he, he, one of my favorite performers that I've seen live and I'm very lucky to have seen him do the open mic performance, like in person, like acoustically, like mm-hmm. with no sound. You know what I mean? I just yeah. listen to him sing, and like he's just a star. Yeah, he's one of the few top artists who can actually sing well, so it's uh, it's, it's refreshing. He's it's great. he's refreshing. great, and he's also so nice. I haven't met him yet, but uh, I, I believe it. Just like a respectful, kind person. Mm-hmm. You know, like sometimes you meet artists and they're just dicks. Yes. Yes. You know, like Very it, it's so disappointing. <laughs> Lucky yeah. was a complete opposite. Like Love it was, it. it was one of those ones where I had no idea what to expect, mm-hmm. and he was just so kind to everyone in the building. Yeah, and I appreciate that. That's what's up. Most improved act or acts of the year. This is a personal one. Mm-hmm. Armani White. So I've known Armani mm-hmm. since like 2011, maybe 12. Oh wow, you know him? Wow. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I like I. One of the artists I manage is from Philly. Okay. So he went to Temple, right? So I had gone out to Philly to meet him for the first time. We just ended up at an Armani and Ground Up show. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was my first time seeing Armani perform live. And then ever since then, I was just like, this dude's got it. Yeah. Um, and it's been cool to see him grow in the last year from being somebody who just makes really great music to somebody who makes hits. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's been really cool. I think for me to just see happen. Yeah, seeing um, him perform at the BT Hip Hop Awards was crazy. I was like, wow, he's he's really here. Yo, like, all of it, man. Like, yeah. I, I, I I like really consume his content because like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a fan and like I just it's nice to see this like happen for him. Yeah. Um. And so like yeah, I see it all the time and I'm just like, yo, this is tight. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like it, it's hard because like having having met him so many times beforehand and just talked to him and like n- learning about his story and like where he's from and stuff like it, it's just like. I'm really happy to see people like make it yeah. who put the work in and have worked really hard. And he's just worked so hard for so long. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful to see people actually get what they deserve yeah. when they put the work in. You Absolutely. Know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, Keem, because I think the the growth between the last project and then the melodic blue was just, I mean, it, it just, it, it's artistically a huge step, I think. Mm. Um, and I, you know, obviously, it helps to have Kendrick and Dave Free kind of be there to help, you know, create yeah. and build this world. But I just think musically, like, he's grown. He's definitely time. trying different things, which I like. I wasn't too big on Melodic Blue. There's a couple songs in there I really liked. But um, I like that he's expanding and trying different things because I think everyone would expect Die For My Bitch because that was such a big breakthrough yeah. project for him. And then he comes with something different. And, you know, you, some people... St- stay on track some people kind of fall off like oh i don't want this it's too different so yeah i, I admire that he's kind of did 
daring enough to do that because some artists will stick to the same thing. I say this a lot. I get really bored of music, like mm-hmm. a lot, right? Like it, it because people aren't pushing boundaries the same way they they yep. used to. Like it's not, and I understand why because everybody like it really has become like we were talking about this before. It's like really become so much about like the numbers and the clicks and yes. like getting on the playlist, right? And like it, it kind of dictates the way that people create now in a way that I think is. I don't want to say sucking like the art out of it, but it, it definitely takes away that like inquisitive and adventurous nature of creating mm-hmm. to create something that is different or out of the box or that combines inspirations from a bunch of different places. So for me, this last year, that is what's excited me the most about music. It hasn't been the artists who just continue to make the same song over and over again and then just push that out because it is a quick yeah. way to just make a make a turnover and like you know make a little bit of streaming mm-hmm. revenue, get another playlist, stay, keep the monthly listeners up. Yeah, um, and that's one of the things that I feel like we've lacked in music a lot is just is this mindset of like let's put let's push the art form forward as a whole mm-hmm. and break boundaries as opposed to just trying to replicate the thing that works. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like, I find myself not listening to music as much just because a lot of things feel the same. Like, I'll I'll put a podcast on before I listen to music because I know, like, this person's just trying to sound like this person. This person sounds like this person. And so when I do find a new artist or just hear a new sound, like, my eyes light up. I'm like, yes, like, something different. Good. Because everyone is running the same race (laughs) at the same pace and then just trying to outpace each other rather than taking a different race completely. So I feel that. I feel that completely. Um, Nice. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So speaking of music, oh, did you have any more Most Improves? I don't want to cut you off. I mean, I wrote some names down, but I don't think it's anybody that I would stand by now that I'm looking at it again. (laughs) (laughs) He's an honest man. (laughs) I can't lie about it. I wrote some names down, but, like, honestly, like, I... mm. Some of them are too early to say that they improved that much, and Mm. some of them didn't really improve that much. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, I'll give you this one, actually, because Red Veil. Right, but okay. I feel like he did, like he, I mean, he's like literally what, like he's a kid, like he's mm. a child. You know what I mean? No offense, but like he, like he's young, he's very young, and he made a very good album. Mm. Like it was an extremely good album. Everything that he's made since that album has also been really good, mm. both on the production side and on the on the actual performance and, and write on songwriting side of things. Like it's, he's great. Yeah, you're going to have to send me all these names, these projects, so I can listen to some uh, different stuff. He has a song called PG Baby. They just put hit. the remix out with Denzel Curry because he's, okay. he's from PG County as well. Nice. And I mean, like, I, I can't remember how old he is. Like, he's like maybe just out of high school, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit older than that. But his manager is like, like, like he goes to NYU. Oh, wow. So they, they're like really like, they're just like making waves, man. They're doing yeah. a great job. That's dope. That's dope. Cool. Cool. Definitely want to tap in. Well, y'all got a lot of names, a lot of things to check out here. <laughs> I had so. too many names. Fuck. <laughs> Not, never too many. Never. So we're here for it, Discovery. But uh, speaking of Discovery, let's get into some tunes. You can throw your headphones yeah, on. And let's see what Frank Ocean got to say for us. First, okay, vocals, all right. <laughs> That's one of my favorite albums of all time. It is it is just, there's not enough good things to say about Channel Orange, yeah. man. Like, it's it a is, perfect album. It, honestly, yeah. Yeah. Even down to the interludes. I'm not a big interlude person. But really? like, just, I, I just, the, the, what's the word? The, uh, the sequencing on that album. Mm-hmm. It just moves yeah. in such a good way. I don't know. I, I love it. Frank sequences. Yeah, all, uh, that's one thing I can say about all of his products is, is they all are sequenced extremely well. Like Blonde, like and Blonde got a lot of hate. And I, at first, I was kind of male on it. And I then, was too until yeah. very recently. Oh, recently. Okay. I think it's aged extremely well. Oh, so well, so well, bro. Like, like maybe better than any other album from that time period. If I'm being honest, like it just I I had no idea what I was missing out on. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I regret not appreciating it the way that everybody else did when it came out. Yeah, because it, it was such a deviation from Channel Orange as well. But, like, Frank's good, man. <laughs> Frank's good. That's, great. <laughs> that's it. But uh, I know you got a track for us. Well, what did you bring for us to play in our first slide deck of 2023? All right, so this song is called Lost Cause. Uh, it's by an artist called Bray. He is a young Filipino artist based in L.A. Uh, this was our first AAPI signing at Genius Distro, which meant a lot to me, being Asian as well. Um, and also is like our most recent release. It came out in, I think the single came out in November. The album came out in December. Uh, who the fuck is Bray, which I, I said earlier as well. Um, honestly, he's just a really talented kid. I found him in my Twitch stream and on my discord, uh, listened to him for, 
I want to say like probably three or four months of mm -hmm. just like hearing demos on stream and being like, yo, I love this. This is really great. Um, just watched him grow, watched him do the work on social and like really, really like, I mean, put the work in, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so took a chance on it and it's been really good. I'm, I'm really proud of it. I think it's an amazing album. This song is one of my favorites. Um, UK garage kind of vibe. So enjoy. Let's tap in. I'm a mark with right. it. I'm mark with this. I'm gonna I'm switch to Spotify and save it so I don't have to yeah, deal with the right. bullshit. But uh, that was dope. I rock with that. Uh, we did a we did an open mic performance for him mm -hmm. with that as well, and he absolutely killed it, man. I was mm -hmm. super proud of him. Uh, he just like he really. Uh, I, you never know what to expect when you put an artist on like a performance series, yeah, right? especially real. like when they're a younger artist and then newer in it. But he he's really impressed, mm -hmm. honestly. Like I was I was really proud of what he did. So I would check that out. Quick plug. Go check that open mic out. His music videos on YouTube as well on, on the Genius channel. So go check that out. For sure. For sure. Yeah, that was that was great. I rock with that. Um, my track. I brought a track <clears throat> by uh, an artist by the name of Dende. And this track is called Better Than Him. And it is produced by Billy Blunt. So let's get into Better Than Him.
I can't lie. I'll treat you better than him. Falling for me is what you should have been did. The duality of man where we could be in a happy, committed relationship <laughs> and love some dirty macking. <laughs> some dirty macking anthems. Never get old. It's just fantastic, but uh, like we said, Dende is great. I got, I got hip to him in like 2021. Mm -hmm. Like that that crew of like him, uh, Osar, Byri, like they're really Chris, they're all man yeah. Chris Patrick, right? of oh, course. Chris like they're phenomenal. they're they're really the future, but but they're now like they're they're doing their thing, and that song is like so well produced. I, I love the progression of it, uh, the layered vocals. Um, yeah, it's just, it's great. Like, I, yeah, man. I really love it. Uh, so this is from his EP, Before We Crash. He just dropped it this week. Um, so if y'all have not heard Before We Crash, then day, check it out. Six six songs, really easy listen. And um, yeah, he's, he's he's here. He's here. So He's amazing, bro. Yeah. Honestly, that whole crew is really amazing. Yeah. Yeah, great team. Um, and he's funny as hell on Twitter. I don't know if you follow him, but he's yeah. fucking oh, yeah, hilarious. I, I, I see all his content, too. Because <laughs> he, he's, like, he's, like, proudly but bisexual. So, like, someone made, like, a gay joke to him. And he was like, well, I'm, I'm, I actually like men, so what now? Like, something like that. It was just so funny. I was like, you own that shit, bro. Like, he has absolutely. a hilarious series where he, like, asks people questions on the street, yeah. too. And I just, I remember seeing that series and be like, damn, he is so charismatic on yeah. camera. He does a great job. Yeah. It's very engaging. It's very funny content mm -hmm. not everyone can do that yeah 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 because and, and it's tough too because like there's this pressure on artists now to like make content oh yeah the content creators now you're not just yeah anymore. You're a content yeah creator. and it's like you can tell a lot of them are really trying and not doing so well with it yeah and so when you see someone who's just naturally good at it and good at making music too it's like it's refreshing you know what it is man people are just trying too hard yeah i, I tell my artists all the time like it doesn't need to be this like crazy production, this crazy concept. You just got to be yourself. Literally, Like, it. more than anything, you just have to be yourself. That means all your little weird quirks, all mm -hmm. the stuff that you like to do, all your little hobbies, like, just share that with people. Mm -hmm. People want to feel like they're a part of your journey and feel like they know who you are. And, yeah, it sucks. I, I understand it from the artist side, too. It sucks having to give up all of this, all these pieces of yourself mm -hmm. when you're also giving music up and, like, giving, giving people yourself through that. Yeah. But it is just the reality of what it's like to be an artist now. So if you are trying to be an artist, mm -hmm. like, you kind of just have to understand, like, it's more than just the music now. Yeah. We have all these avenues to connect with them, and, like, the mystery thing doesn't work for everyone. Mm -hmm. So utilize it. TikTok. Um, oh, yeah, we can take headphones off. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, TikTok. <laughs> IG lives, all that stuff, like use them to your benefit. It's it's there to be used, so use 100%. it. Um, but if you all want to check out these slides and everything that we got, you can hit the Stay Busy Slide Deck playlist. It is available on all platforms. Hit the link tree in our IG or Twitter bio. And artists, if you want to slide, add it to the deck, or if you want your stuff played on Kavon's Twitch or add it to the Audio Mac playlist, you can just send us an email at Stay Busy Pod, and we we will pass it along to him because he's out here building community for y'all. So before we get into our interview, we got a fun rapid fire game for you called hashtag another review so I'm, I'm i'm gonna throw something at you and you you know answer honestly and yeah let's just get into it. are you prepared sir nothing is rapid fire with me so just <laughs> <laughs> just know that you're gonna get a long-winded answer for any rapid fire question with an he, explanation. he just like me <laughs> So you have, we were talking before, like you've had quite a, quite a come up, like living in England, North Carolina, Tennessee, coming to New York, like very cultured dude, a lot of different experiences, like young Kayvon, what, 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 what was young Kayvon doing? <laughs> uh, activities, like all the fucking time. Like I had a very <laughs> packed schedule when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So I used to be a competitive swimmer. Nice. Um, I also played in orchestras. I was a violinist, so I had uh, like lessons every week, and then I had soccer as well. So it was a combination of being up at 5 to 7 in the morning for swim practice, mm -hmm. then going to school, uh, doing school all day, leaving school, going home, eating, either going to a violin lesson before swimming practice again <laughs> or just going home, eating, watching The Simpsons, mm -hmm. a big Simpsons fan. Uh, Good show. Practicing music and then – you know, just listening, uh, listening to music at every single outset. I don't sit in silence. This mm -hmm. is the thing about me that my wife knows, but I, I can't, I hate sitting in silence. Mm -hmm. It hooks me. <laughs> um, so I, I constantly have music on. That's, that's like been a thing my entire life, just yeah. constantly listening to music, whether it was on the CD or on a Walkman or just on the radio. Um, playing football. I, like all the time, like mm -hmm. at school, outside, and like out with friends. I used to walk to school really young. So I was walking to school on my own with friends when I was like 11 mm. to, to 13 like it's just what you do in England like you get together you work school 
Um, and then like you go out on your bikes because it's a small town. So like yeah. you go out on your bikes and like go to the field and like play football and just like kind of generally go around and do naughty things. <laughs> <You should> be <laughs> naughty in the city outside <laughs> as a kid. Um, and then honestly, that was a really good student until I found out I was moving countries. So like mm. a lot of it was like learning. I read a lot. Or I used to read a lot when I was a kid. So like mm. it was a lot of like reading in my spare time. And I'm an only child, so I spent a lot of time alone. Mm. You know what I mean? So it was a lot of reading, it was a lot of video games. I'm still a big gamer to this day. Mm. Uh, I still read as much as I can, but it's mostly graphic novels now, if I'm being completely honest. Mm -hmm. I like the visual stimulation. Yeah, you're a big uh, anime manga guy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Manga. Is it manga or manga? Manga. Manga. And then the Korean version is manhwa. Manhwa. Yeah. Look at us learning. Yeah. And it's, uh, <laughs> but it's basically the same thing. There's not nice. really too much difference. Um, did, did, were, 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 were your parents uh, musicians, or was it something that they kind of just put you into? No, my dad tried to start learning an instrument. Uh, mm. I'm gonna put him on blast because he's terrible. <laughs> he tried to start, he tried to start learning an instrument, which was very pleasing to me, mm. having spent my childhood being told that I need to practice more, mm. to then be able to look at him and be like, "Hey, you need to practice." Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun moment for me. Um, no, nah, my mom, my dad is a music lover. Mm. Uh, he used to he he was a big disco goer back in the day. I wish I wish I could show you a picture of him. Like he had like a like a ridiculous seventies fro. Like, oh, I love it. <laughs> huge. Um, and so he used to go to the disco after this is after he moved from Iran to England, and so mm. he was a big disco goer. Um, and so I, I actually grew up with like a lot of like Motown in the house and like just funk and disco because that's what he listened to. Yeah. Um, and so I think that was really the start. I, like for me musically, that was like my entry point. Really, you know, like it was that, and then like. Middle Eastern music, which I didn't really get, but it's really hauntingly sad and beautiful. And mm -hmm. I, I think I appreciate it now more as an adult where I can understand the complexity of it versus when I was a kid where I just like, you know, I don't understand the language. So all I hear is just like nonsense. Now, well, now I listen to a lot of foreign language music too. So I really appreciate mm -hmm. the feeling that I get from it. Yeah. Um, but that was, that was kind of the entry point for me. There's no one who does, I, I have like maybe one person in my family who was a composer, but I don't know him at all. Mm -hmm. So I never really had like any. They didn't want me to work in music. I feel that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> like, really until, like, probably, like, f four or five years ago was, yeah. was the point when they realized, like, oh, this is, like, a viable career path. Mm, and my dad's a mechanical engineer. So, like, mm. you know, he, he's very science math safe. Yeah. Um, be safe. Do a secure job. And you want to be still to this day. I go home. He's like, you know, it's not too late to switch to finance. I'm like, dad, I'm 30. It's too late. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But no, my mom has always been super supportive of me creatively and I think has always pushed me to just do what, like, she's the one I think who's really instilled a lot of like my viewpoints on like life and like how I should live my life. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, I'm really grateful for her. She's always kind of pushed me to just like do new stuff. There's never been a time, I guess, in my family where they've been like, no, don't do this. Yeah. They might not have been happy with it. Mm hmm but I've always had my mom on my side to talk my dad into it. So it's, yeah. it's always like kind of worked out in the end. Yeah. Um, but like I, I got my first corporate music job out of school, right? Mm -hmm. And that, I hated it. Like it made me miserable. Was, I, that, I used to, was that Master Rex? Uh, CAA. Master oh. Rex was actually an internship, internship when I was yeah, still yeah. in school. And that was, I, I put it on my resume, but if I'm being real, I didn't do shit but play around in the studio for <laughs> two hours a day in there. Like I, I did not do a he thing. He sold it well on LinkedIn. He said metadata entry, engineering, production tasks. That's the smoke and mirrors we were talking about, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this dude used to let me go. He had a house. He had a studio in his house, right? Amazing home studio in uh, mm -hmm. in Nashville, Tennessee. Like the most beautiful studio ever. I hope he never sees this because he was a really weird dude. He never. So we used to work in his basement, right? Me and me and my wife. She got the job first, and then she was like, "Hey, do you want an internship?" And at the time, like I had just gotten my uh, student visa, mm -hmm. so up until my junior year of college, I could not work at all. Like I I couldn't have a job. I couldn't have an internship. I was just out here with no experience on my resume going into my senior year. So my senior year of school. I was like, I need to have a job and internships. Well, where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to Belmont University oh, in Nashville, nice. um, which is, they got a great music business program. Mm -hmm. I'll plug them for that. Super outdated information for the most part, mm -hmm. but like a really good basis of like, what is the music industry? What happens in it? Um, and some great professors. Some of the professors there, exceptional. Some of them, eh, left <laughs> a lot to be desired. Um, so went to school for that, got out of school, got a job. Hated it. Used to come home and cry because it just like literally sucked the life and passion and love out of me entirely. Uh, so I quit that job, and that was a really difficult conversation to have with my parents because it was the first time they'd been like, "Oh, you have a corporate job. You got great benefits. 
you get paid twelve fifty an hour, which is horrible. Um, but I felt like everything know. out of college. Oh, dude, absolutely. Twelve fifty an hour out of college uh, was cool, except yeah. for the fact that I was getting paid for forty hours at that rate, mm. five hours uh, at that plus half, I guess. Mm. And then another 15 hours of not paid at all because mm. it was six. I was working like 60 hours a week, but getting paid for 45. Yeah, ridiculous. Um, so I quit that job, and that was a really hard conversation to have with my parents because it was the first time that they were like, you know, I took them to the office, I walked them around. They got to see. I was working with like big, huge country stars, um, and so like to them, like they, that was the first time seeing the music industry and being like, oh, like this is, you can do this. Yeah. And then I quit. <laughs> and I started driving Ubers and like fucking just like freelancing and doing stuff on my own and like it, that was I think a, a hard thing for them to understand but I do think that that time period is really what has like made me able to do everything that I do now like I needed that time to like figure out how to move around on my own without CAA yeah. which did not really help me that much I mean like in conversations I think on my resume yes mm -hmm. from a corporate training standpoint absolutely mm. but from like a networking standpoint, nah. yeah. didn't really do that much for me. I was working in country. I did not want to work in country. So <laughs> the amount of contacts that I took away from that job, very few. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel that. Uh, good music all day. You kind of, I, I know you're at Genius now, you're director of a &R, but you mm -hmm. had previous experience being a director of a &R at uh, Good Music All Day for three years, and like, yeah. you did a lot of different stuff there. So what, what was that like? Man, uh, so first off, shout out to Tim Weber, who was the founder of Good Music All Day. That dude has been a ongoing supporter of mine since I was a rapper. Mm -hmm. So like, I was like, I remember I met him, I met him when I was 17. I'd moved to Nashville from North Carolina for school. I'd just gotten there. I had I had really only been an artist for like two years before that. And I'd just been recording myself at home and writing songs at home, getting beats off shadowville.com, which I don't know if any of you remember Shadowville, but nah. I think it still exists. It's basically like the early version of Beat Stars, okay. except all the beats were shit. Like they just, <laughs> none of them were good. None of the producers who were on the platform were really that good. But I used to get beats from there all the time because you could download them for free. And like, yeah. you know, I'm like on fucking acoustica mix craft and like audacity recording it was like the worst doors that you can use as an artist like they just they you record in them you immediately sound bad there's no way around it so that's how i started and i was like making mixtapes selling them at school thinking like oh, man no. i hope no one has those cds um so i was like selling them selling the mixtapes at school i got to i got to belmont and met a couple people who like made music uh there was this guy sam who was a producer from boston and then his friend paul who was an incredible saxophone player, uh, also from Boston. And I just started hanging around with, you know, hanging out with music people, just kind of like seeing what we could get into and what we could make. And I met Tim just randomly as, as fuck. Like we just went to his apartment one day and he had recording equipment in his room. And the first song that I ever made that got on a music blog, which was good music all day, mm -hmm. was recorded on Tim's equipment in his bedroom <laughs> the first time he ever met me. Mm. Like, this dude just let me into his apartment and was like, yeah, go make a song. That's hard. And did not bother us the whole time we were in there making music. Um, and so, you know, fast forward, he supported me all through, like, my artist career. Like, good music all day, did, honestly... I think for a lot of people in the blog era, like it did a lot for them because, yeah. like, even now there's there's a lot of artists that Tim is still in touch with who, you know, like it, it kind of like made made their career in some in some cases. Like at the time, you know, like the blog era, it was different. Mm -hmm. Like blogs really had that power then, you yeah. know. And so, fast forward a couple of years, I'm working at CAA at the time. Uh, my wife had just started working for Good Music All Day because obviously, like, we'd just been connected for so long, right? Yeah. In the same city, we hang out all the time. Um, and so she started working for them after they sold to this company that I'm not going to talk about because that company was dog shit and the mm. people who worked at it and owned it. I, I hope they see this. Fuck those people. <laughs> those people are the thing that are wrong. <laughs> yeah, fuck those people. Those those people are what's wrong with the music industry and wrong with the media industry as a whole. Mm. Right? So he sold the company to those people. Um, and so they hired my wife to do social media stuff and eventually it just kind of like fell because I was, I was doing playlists and stuff already anyway. Mm. So they wanted me to come do this Friday segment called Fresh Picks Fridays, which mm. 10, 15 years Playing later is now, is now Fresh Picks the playlist on Audio Mac and has been Fresh Picks the playlist on Spotify at one point as well. But like that was my first instance of Fresh Picks. And so I used to comb through every submission that we got in email every week. I would spend literally all like all day scrolling through music, listening to music. That was how I found artists like Jack Harlow mm. uh, when he was literally 15 years old. Mm. Like, I was one of the first people to put him on a music blog. I, it was cool as fuck when I got to have this full circle moment with him and Genius, too, and be like, yo, like, 
I didn't breathe. think that I'd be here. I don't, I don't know if I, thought, <laughs> I don't know if you thought that this, this would be happening down yeah. the line, but I had to find artists like him. I got put onto artists like Nav and Rex Life Raj and Saba, like really early, Sylvan LeCue. And like, so I was able to just build a track record of finding great artists and putting them on and like working with their teams and building my network that way. And so that was, I think for me, I was at CAA, I started to realize, all right, I'm getting so much more done myself mm -hmm. like outside of my day job at work like I'm, I'm taking calls on the way to work in the car i'm sending emails on my lunch break i'm listening to submissions on the way and on the way home from work you know yeah. like so i just realized and that was part of the reason i left ca too because i was just like i'm getting so much more done in the path that i want to go in specifically with hip-hop and r&b i'm making so many more connections i'm meeting people in new york like I'm, I'm flying up here and getting into offices and like connecting with people again this is very transactional of course mm -hmm. but like at the time it was exactly what it, the catalyst that i needed to like just get my foot in the door and start um and so that honestly man that job was a lot of the reason that i, I got here in the first place yeah. you know like it was it's the reason i met rob mm -hmm. but to be honest with you tim was the one who set up that meeting with rob for me the first meeting i ever had with rob Tim put us on text together. I was in New York for just a trip to meet people and network. Cause I also knew I wanted to move here. Yeah. You know, like that was a thing for me. Like I was in Nashville, but I was like, I've, I've hit a ceiling here. Like I can't do anything more. Like I'd, I'd been throwing sold out shows for local artists there. Like I'd been doing big events there. And like, I just realized like, yo, if I stay here, I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, that there's not more, there's not a ceiling that I can get past. Um, and so I started to come here cause I just, I think I've always been in love with the city, mm -hmm. you know, like my wife and I talk about this a lot. Being not from America, we are fed a lot of Amer American culture, but like the majority of it centers around New York. Like yeah. it's, it's stories about New York and the people in New York and their experiences. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, I grew up watching movies that happened here all the time, mm -hmm. and and so I think subconsciously I always knew I wanted to be here. Yeah, I also came here when I was fifteen and like just fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I started coming up, up here. I hit Tim. Cause Tim and Rob had been talking about some other stuff and I just known each other like for a while. And I was like, yo, like I really respect this guy. I just want to ask him questions about what he does, like how he got into artist relations, like what is artist relations at all? Um, I just felt like it was, some, it would be something I'd be good at. Cause I, I know what it's like to be an artist and I understand the process of everything. And so he, he helped me set up that meeting. I went and I actually showed up 24 hours early. This is a fun, this is a funny story about my meeting with Rob. I, accidentally came to this meeting a whole day before the time I was meant to be at this meeting and prior proper planning. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, cause I was, and I was freaking out too. Cause I was late. Yeah. Like, I, like I was like, fuck, I'm going to be late to this meeting with Rob. Like I've been begging to try and get this meeting with Rob. And now I'm going to show up like 20 minutes late. Also, like I just, my first time in New York. So I didn't understand the traffic mm. and like the, there's kind of a grace period. Like after you've been in New York for a while, you understand there's like a 15 minute grace period for you to get anywhere you're supposed yeah. to be going. Yeah. Cause people expect the 15 minute delay of mm -hmm. either the train or the traffic. Either yep. way it's expected. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the time I'm new here. So I'm in, I'm in the back of the Uber, like freaking out, like, Oh my God, I'm going to be late to this. I'm going to make a bad first impression. This is terrible. Uh, so I emailed him from the car because I didn't even have his number yet. I emailed him from the car and I was like, hey, I'm running like 10, 15 minutes late. I'm so sorry. Like, please don't hate me. Uh, and then he emailed back and he was like, hey, I actually meant tomorrow. I'm so sorry. Uh, but I'll come back to the office if you just wait there. And I was like, what, what do you mean? So like now, now I know he lives in, you know, I'm not going to say where he lives, but right. he, he lives mm -hmm. off, off Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So like it, it was like. I just didn't expect anyone to do that for a stranger ever, yeah. right? And so, like, immediately I had so much respect for him because he just came early to do this meeting out of the blue off my mistake, <laughs> right? And so we ended up sitting and talking for, like, an hour and a half, I think, and it was such an amazing conversation. I've never – I just felt like we connected, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and that was the start of really, like, the whole shit. He emailed me, like, two weeks later and was like, Yo, you should apply for this job. We've never had it a genius before. Um I wasn't the only one who applied for it, but, you know, he, he had emailed me and just told me I should. And so I applied. I kept coming back up here looking for apartments, just planned to move regardless because, you know, it's like you're not going to get a job in New York unless you live here, really. So go, I got back to Nashville, did my application. They sent me a take-home. I sent a nine-page response to the take-home back uh, on Monday. They sent it to me on Friday. But I wanted the I wanted the job. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, I, I gotta prove how much I want this job to these people because there's no reason for them to give me this job at all. I don't live in New York. I don't really have the experience interviewing artists. And this job is interviewing <laughs> artists. Um, and so I just I did everything that I could to just make it clear that I wanted this job and yeah. that I would do my best at it if I got it. 
so yeah, that's that's kind of how I got here, man. And then we get to 2017, your artist relations associate at Genius. And over the last five years, you've risen up to artist relations manager, senior artist relations manager, artist relations director, and director of A&R. Genius, like, I've, I've been tapped in for obviously, like, five, six years at this point. And, like, I've always admired the, the team you guys have. Like, of course, Rob, of course, you. My friend Regina worked for yeah. you out for a while. Oh, she was amazing, bro. I learned so much from Regina. Yeah, that's the homie. That's the homie. There's a couple of people whose names are escaping me right now, but, like, I always loved the work that y'all did, especially like the video content too, because yeah. you, Genius did so well transitioning, like recognizing, like yeah, well, like written yeah. stuff is cool. Like the, the, there's definitely an audience for that, but with Twitter and Instagram and Reels and all this stuff, like you got to give people stuff to watch. And I always thought that that was um, really great. I went to the Future Genius level event in 2019. I went to the the T Pain one, like just. Always really great content that that y'all did. Great ideas. I, I I wish I could have made it to one of the parties, like the, the, uh, the parties you have in the summer, the barbecue. Yeah, yeah, bro. I used to book those. It was so much fun. We. I'm not. I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. Exclusives. <laughs> I can't say anything about it. I can't. No, I can't say. It. I'll tell you off camera. <laughs> okay. But. Cool. 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 <laughs> Sorry, y'all. But but um, yeah. Like I just like I don't know. There's like not enough good things for me to say about Genius, just because like. The love for the art is there, the innovation is there, and then the talent is there too. Like, and I don't know, it's it's just like it's 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 just so refreshing to look at it as a journalist. And there's a lot of publications out here who aren't really doing good shit. So I tell people all the time, I would not have done this anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I, I really truly believe that I never wanted to be a journalist. I never wanted to interview artists. It was never something that I, I thought I would do in my life. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't a part of the plan by any means. It was just something that happened and that felt like a really good opportunity for me to advance not only my career, but just learn more yeah. and grow more and understand a part of the industry that I never really understood before. But I am so proud of the work that we did and of the team that I got to work with and how much I got to learn from those people. Like, mm -hmm. B. Fred taught me so much about content Fred, strategy. Yeah, yeah, like, I can't even begin to, to like describe how much he taught me about content strategy. Mm -hmm. And the importance of like analyzing how things are consumed and figuring out why people are watching certain things. Because that, that for me was like a big part of what I did, especially when I got into being a senior artist relations manager and artist relations director. It, it, my job transitioned from just doing interviews and booking interviews to strategy of how we book, why we book, and mm -hmm. how much we have back, like how much content we have backed up, right? So like... You know, I think one of the things I'm proud of stuff was like pre-pandemic. Like, it's not gonna sound like a crazy person, but I am a little bit like, I, my mom's from Hong Kong, so like, we think about this shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we, we, we've been wearing masks on planes for a while, right? Right. So like, I started to see this pop up in China, and like, I was like, all right, we, we got to think about this. Yeah. Especially from a content perspective, like, we need to make sure we have some sort of like backup. Because if we don't, and this shit hits and people stop traveling and we can't shoot, mm -hmm. we're just gonna be stuck. Yeah. So in, like, December of 2019, I guess, I was, like, in the office being, like, hey, we should really start thinking about backing up, like, extra episodes, maybe getting a couple extra, like, months backed up so we have the time to figure out how we transition just in case. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. Everything shut down in March. We had two and a half months of content backed up, so we had two and a half months to figure out how we transitioned from doing in-person content to figuring out how we can do the same thing remotely. Mm -hmm. And huge props to our video team at the time. They were incredible innovators in figuring out how we could do this, how we could keep the the, the feeling of everything and the core of everything there with with for the remote world. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And and so I don't know, man. I, I really enjoyed the team that I worked with. I learned so much. There was a one of my producers, actually, my first producer. Uh, her name was Felicia, mm -hmm. and uh, like yeah, you know, like she completely changed the way that I think about interviewing and, and conversations and talking to people and producing content mm -hmm. to this day. I still think about a lot of the things that she taught me about producing content. And Day as well, Tiobu, uh, shout out to her. She was my second producer when I was doing content. We did Deconstructors, we did Verified Sale, we did Open Mics Together. And again, she just taught me so much about interviewing. And then Rob, like, you know, for the first two to four months of my job, I just sat and watched Rob interview. That's how I learned to interview, mm -hmm. just watching him and asking him questions and yeah. being like, you know, like, you know, like, what, what is the, go like, how do you think about interviewing? And to me, like, it was just this idea of it being a conversation mm -hmm. more so than anything else. And the thing that I think I really took away from Rob that I, I think has made me a good interviewer, and I'm going to toot my own horn and say that yeah. I am, because I feel like I've done some interviews that, that were from. really great. I've got the list here. <laughs> um, and so what I learned from him is that you have to give up a bit of yourself. Yes. 
Like you can't you can't expect someone to give you this piece of them mm-hmm. without giving something back. Mm-hmm. And so weirdly, therapies have been like interv- I mean, interviews, interviews have been like therapy therapy. for me yes. in some cases because I get to have these really like candid and open conversations with people that honestly, like I might not have with somebody who's not a stranger, mm. but because we don't know each other and we're just having this moment of connecting over something very specific, mm. I'm able to open up and talk about things that, <laughs> and I used to say this to people too, like my producers know more about me than some of my friends do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause they've heard me talk about things that I wouldn't necessarily talk about yeah. with, with my friends mm. as much. And so, yeah, I, I'm re, I miss that team. You know, like now, obviously, it's it's not the same team anymore. Yeah. There's bits and pieces of it that have kind of – everyone's gone off and they've done their own thing, and mm-hmm. it's really amazing to watch them all just succeed in, in their own rights. I love that. Um, but I miss, I miss the team. I miss what we had. I miss what we had at the office. I miss the events that we used to do. Like there was something really special about being in the building between 2017 and 2020 mm-hmm. that I just can't describe. Like it, it's really like just something that you had to be there and like experience. For sure. And it was amazing. Yeah. Um, I want to get into Kayvon's house, the, your Discord community, um, because I, I really think it's the, that and, and what you're doing on Twitch. Like, I just think it's amazing. Like, kind of like what I said in, in, in your intro, it would be very easy to just be doing the genius thing and just stick with that. You know, like you've interviewed Tank. Sabrina Carpenter, Roy Woods, Tank, bro, Queen What Nigel. an interview. That was a weird one. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was just because we were talking about the song When We. So, like, the whole thing right. was about, like, how Tank has sex. You know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> we got graphic, dude. It got real graphic. This, the footage that didn't make the final interview was just too graphic to make the final interview. It was a hilarious, mm-hmm. hilarious experience. Yeah. But. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, you're good. <laughs> like, you could be content with this and almost to the point of getting complacent, but you created a community to put on other artists, to listen to music, to just connect with people. So what kind of inspired you to start Kayvon's House in 2021? First person I have to give props to is uh, Drew and Medvis from the Digilog, Mm -hmm. um, because I think what they've done with the Digilog has really inspired me in creating community and thinking about community and and finding finding the importance in it. you know, I, I watched Drew build it from, like, I, I got here in 2017. So, like, Drew was one of the first people I met when I got to New York. Uh, he hit me up on LinkedIn, was just like, hey, I do this. Do you want to meet up at the office and just talk a little bit? I'd love to learn more about what you do. And, yeah, I t- took the meeting. We sat. We hit it off. And then now it was, what, like, six years later? Um, <laughs> anytime they do anything, like, I'm always just like, bro, like, if you need me or you want me to just let me know, I'll be there. Mm-hmm. And so like, I've traveled with them. We've done meetups. I signed an artist based off of one of their meetups that we did this year in Nashville. Like, so it. I think seeing them build this network that they've built, which is solely focused on empowering and helping people grow and develop, and and even placing people in careers, like that to me is such a beautiful thing that we don't see enough of in the music industry. Mm-hmm. So that was one part of it. The other part of it for me was always that with what we did at Genius and what we did with Media, there was a huge gap. Yes for artists who are before a certain level. Um, and that that's a gap that exists across the board. I, mm-hmm. I don't think there's really that many platforms. Like I, we talked about it, right? And there is some platforms that focus on music discovery. And that's yeah. something that I hope to inspire more people to do. Like whenever I talk to young people, I'm like, build your own platform. Don't mm-hmm. be afraid of it. Yeah. Like just do it. That's it gives you more too. power, gives you more leverage. Yeah. Um, and so part of it was that, you know, it was like seeing this gap and being like, yo, like, all right, like I'm I'm in a position now where people kind of give a shit about what I'm listening to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like more so than they ever have before. So let me use that platform, figure out a way to just support artists. And then like on a more selfish side of things, it is a pipeline of talent for me. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't have to go do the shit that every other A&R does. Mm-hmm. I don't have to dig through fresh finds and like look through the same things. So that, I don't have to dig through TikTok the same way. Mm-hmm. So I have it coming to me. Yeah. And so I can kind of look through it and watch it grow and develop without having to do all of the research because I have this place where people are trying to get it to me. Mm -hmm. So it fills my playlist. If it's this content, you know, I think one of the things that I really am focused on this year is just more opportunities for people in the discord. Cause that is, that is at the core of it, right? It's like more opportunities for artists and having a central place where people can submit music to me. That was, I think initially 
actually, I'm lying. Initially, I got on Discord because I was just gaming, right? And so I was in service <laughs> with my friends because we were just gaming together and we'd be talking on Discord while we gamed mm -hmm. during the pandemic. That mm -hmm. was like how I got on Discord in the first place. Mm -hmm. That was when I started streaming. I was I was streaming Call of Duty first. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to do. I was like, ah, fuck, I'm just game. And like, we'll see what happens, right? Real. Got a little PlayStation camera, set up the Twitch account, started mm -hmm. streaming, got to affiliate and was like, all right, but, like, no one really gives a fuck about me playing video games, like, mm -hmm. if I'm being honest. I'm playing at, like, 11 o'clock to, like, 3 in the morning. Yeah. No one's up. No one's watching. So I did one stream one day. This is a pandemic, right? So I had nothing to do. I was just sitting there twiddling my thumbs at one point. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to stream in the middle of the day. I'm going to play some FIFA in the middle of the day and just listen to my playlist and talk about my playlist. And so that was the first iteration of the music stream was me sitting and listening to Fresh Picks, talking about the songs, asking people what they thought, and playing FIFA. Mm -hmm. Um, and that stream did extremely well. So after that, I was like, wait, okay, maybe I should be doing music stuff on Twitch instead because that's actually what people want to see. They want to send me music. They want to hear what I think about it. So I did my first music uh, feedback stream and just tried. And honestly, it's been cool because I've seen some artists that have come through it, like really like maybe not blow up to like a huge level, but like they're definitely the ones that people are talking about like in the underground, you know right. what I mean, in that space before they get to – to really being critically acclaimed or whatever. Like, so for me, it's been really beautiful to watch that. Like, that's been the thing. And then, like, you know, we fostered collaborations between artists and producers, artists and artists. We've connected artists from all over the globe with each other. Like, every single stream, I'm pulling up people's socials, and they're getting at least four or five followers off the stream every mm -hmm. time. And that is all I can ask for, is that we're sending support and sending views and streams and likes and clicks. Like, that's really all that matters. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, it's making a difference for some of these artists, even if it's a small one. You know, I, I definitely get in my head about the how big the impact that I'm making is for mm. these people because I wish it was more. You know what I mean? And, and the goal Naturally. is to keep building it yeah. to a point where it's, like, really hugely impactful for them. Mm. That's what I want. Like, I want it to be a thing that can really make a difference for them. Mm. I mean, bro, you got 4,000 people in a Discord. I've never heard of a 4,000-person Discord ever. Yo, you know what's crazy, <laughs> dude? I just I added my second moderator, at the, like, right before Christmas, and I made a video about the Discord we're at 4,350 already. Oh, my God. In, like, three weeks. Wow. <laughs> and so, like, that's the thing is, like, for me, it's, like, the, the growth, too. It's, like, it's grown so much. Like, it's essentially doubled since I started it. last Like, last year, at this time, we were at, like, 2,000 members. Mm -hmm. And then in 20... I went really hard with content this year. Like, I can't lie. That, was, that, that, for me, has been, like, one of the things I've noticed is, like, TikTok, Discord, and Twitch, to me all feed into the same thing, yeah. right? Like, th that's the way that I think about it in, in everything that I do is, like, those three things are connected. So, like, if I'm making TikTok content, it's driving people to Discord. I noticed that the first time I made a TikTok that went kind of viral, and it, like, honestly, that was, like, the jump from 100 members to 2,000 members was, mm -hmm. like, this one TikTok that mm -hmm. just, like, went crazy, right? And so I noticed that, and I was like, all right, well, then let me just keep making content about it on TikTok and keep pushing it. Let me just keep making the educational content that I'm making because I can use it everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Uh, and all of this will feed into the same community. And then it's it's music for the playlists. It, it makes it a little bit easier for me to figure out submissions and make sure that everything's coming in one place. I had my old Fresh Picks playlist on Spotify, which I repurpose as our community playlist. So now the community's got their own playlist. I just today launched, um, I'm, I'm starting like a guest curated series. Nice. Uh, but it's all going to be submissions from the Discord. So the, the goal is again to now put people from the community's music in front of other people in the music industry who aren't me so they can pick their favorite songs. I'll probably whittle it down a little bit if we get too many submissions, but like really try and make it like, all right, like here's an opportunity for now you to get heard by somebody else that I know who's in my network, whether it's a curator or a and or a manager, just somebody who works in music who can also listen to you and maybe just give you that extra, extra cosign. Yeah. That's, that's amazing, man. Congrats to you on that. And like, it's really dope what you're doing for artists. Thanks, like, man. um, Manny Montana, my boy, you, you played yeah. him on, on, on your stream. And he was like super excited about it. And like I'm, I'm seeing his numbers are going crazy too. It's like look at the impact. Like you, you're really doing. Nah, you're really making shit happen for people. Puts a big smile on my face, bro. Literally, like you don't understand. Like we, I went to Digilog Day, right? And I was speaking on the panel. And then at one, this is my first time being in real life because I've been doing this in the pandemic, so I haven't really yeah. met. Like I've never been in a room with like a bunch of people from the Discord before, mm -hmm. and like I was on the on the panel speaking, and then like I said, Kayvon's house, and like literally like half the room like started like clapping, and I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck, bro? There's already this many of you that are here in real life." That's and so the real work. It was cool, man. Like mm -hmm. that that was like such a cool moment for me, and and really like the last like I I wasn't outside much like pre wedding, right? Because yeah. I just couldn't be, and so. After I got married and I started to be outside a little Congrats bit more. Congrats on that, by the way. Thank you, thank you. Um, 
one of the best parts of 2022, honestly. Mm-hmm. It, yes, I, truthfully, was probably the best day of 2022. I enjoyed it a lot. The pictures are beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> All my wife, again, if you need an event planner, <laughs> an event designer, a wedding planner, Shout my wife's got you, bro. She's got the creative vision. Um, so, you know, I started being outside a little bit more and then just running into people that I knew from Discord or Twitch. And, like, that has been one of the most... I, I say this on stream. I, I said it a lot at the end of the year. Like, last year, bro... I got the most joy from that community. Like, truthfully, I got the most joy. I got the most inspiration at times where I really didn't, (laughs) did not fucking want to do this anymore. And, like, even on Mondays and Fridays, so there's some days I don't want to stream. I'm tired, you know what I mean? Especially on a Monday. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Like, there's some Mondays where I'm like, God, I can't believe I have to do this tonight. But then I get on stream and I actually have, like, such a good time. Yeah. And by the time I'm done, I always have a big smile on my face. And it's really, truly because... I get to just enjoy music for what it is, you know, and like tell people what I think. And it's not, there's no animosity there. There's like, no one's mean, like everyone's kind to each other. And I've been in a lot of other music streams and these motherfuckers are not nice to each other mm. at all. They are mm. rude. Like, it, and like, there are to people me, who really get off on like yeah, trashing shit. Yeah. And like, to me, I just don't understand that. Cause it's like, you're like, we should be nurturing. Again, everyone starts somewhere, right? Mm. So we should be nurturing talent and encouraging it to develop, mm. not tearing it down and telling them to quit. Yeah. Because, like, you never know where somebody will end up if you just encourage – just give them that little bit of encouragement and tell them just a little bit how they can improve. Mm. Just give them that nudge in the right direction. It doesn't take much. Mm. You know, like, it doesn't have to be a 15-, 20-minute consultation. It can be three lines of feedback. Just like, hey, think about these things in the next song that you make. Yeah. Maybe get a better mic. Maybe think about your vocal mix. It's not quite there yet. Maybe you need to tweak that. But if no one's telling these artists that, like, how are they supposed to improve? How do we get great talent without anyone telling them how to get better? Mm-hmm. Spitting, man. Uh, to close, do you have any 2023 resolutions for either yourself, for, for Genius, for the community, like, a- anything? What's, what's this year going to look like for you? Oh, what do you want it to be? Man, I don't really have any resolutions because I just don't think I ever really keep them. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I think that for me, a lot of the goals that I have, I, I have this issue with short term goal setting. Mm-hmm. I made a TikTok about it because I was like, you guys should do this. <laughs> I don't do this. Um, a lot of the TikToks that I make that are educational, it's just shit that I don't do that I know I should be doing that mm-hmm. I know will help. But if this was a this was one for me. Like, I, I don't set short term goals because. I think the reason that I don't really do that, like, I guess I have some in my mind that I'm like, I want to do this this year. Like, I want to sign an artist from the UK this year. That's mm-hmm. like a really, that's a dream of mine that I want to get, right? But like, I think a lot of my goals are long term goals because I know where I want to end up at the end of this. I know what I want to do in my career. Everything else that comes in between now and then is just a part of the journey and does not matter to me as much as getting to that final destination, right? So, like, that, I think that's the way I've looked at my entire career. I'm able to pivot because I don't have all my eggs in one basket. You know what I mean? Like, for me, what I want at the end of this is way bigger than where I'm at right now. You know what I mean? And it's it's a much more complex thing that I'm capable of doing on my own at this point in time, and I know that. And that's fine. So for the next couple of years, it's like get more experience, learn the things that I don't know yet. So my short-term goals are really to fill in the pieces that I don't, that, that aren't there yet for the long-term goal, I guess. Yeah. I feel that. I find I'll set goals and not accomplish them, but then I'll accomplish things that I didn't initially plan to. But the things that I accomplished that I didn't initially plan to are dope as fuck. Like, the job I'm at now, I didn't plan to be working there in January 2022, but I'm happy as hell. So it's like, you know, sometimes other things don't work out, so better things can can happen. So, yeah, I I try not to be beholden to the strict goals, whether long-term or or short-term, because things will just come your way. Things change that constantly were, were meant for you yeah. and they'll be better than you, what you could even imagine so i tweeted this today my life is a series of side quests yeah yeah <laughs> like literally like yeah. today i found myself doing a completely different side quest that i was not planning on doing today mm-hmm. not this this i was planning on doing <laughs> but like some other stuff just like popped up in the middle of the day i was like okay i'm gonna do this now for a little bit yeah um and i just found myself sitting there being like yo like this is what every day is like like mm-hmm. i have my to-do list but the amount of random shit that pops up during the day a random idea that i have or like thought like to get on Canva and just, like, make something that I need to make. Or, like, all right, like, I had this idea to make a playlist. Let me just do it now or, like, start on it. Like, Mm -hmm. it's a lot of, like, just – it's a lot of chaos. Yeah. I say this a lot. Being a day in my life is chaotic. Mm -hmm. It's just doing whatever it feels like the priority in the moment and then 
jumping between 300 things while drinking too much coffee and not enough water. <laughs> <laughs> no, no day is the same in music, but <laughs> not I, 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 I love the spontaneity. I do. I do. I think that's why I do it. Like I'm, yeah. a, I'm a bit addicted to like the pace of it. You yeah. know what I mean? And like the constant change. And, like I love that it is the only thing in my life that I know, but haven't been able to figure out. Mm. You know what I mean? Like because yeah. it, there's no, there's no. I don't think there's any cheat codes in this industry, really. Like there, I mean, there is, but like not really. You know what I yeah, mean? If, yes if you want a, no. you want a long standing career, nah. You can't cut corners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like if you want a quick thing, like in and out, you want to like squeeze some money. Yeah, sure, you can cut corners. Mm. There's a way. There's yeah. ways. Not great, but yeah. there's ways. <laughs> yeah, it can be done. Man, well, thank you so much for pulling up, man. I had oh, a really thank you for having conversation. me. I, th- I think we could have won another hour, honestly. Like, I, I'm a long-winded guy. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I think that's why we hit it off so well. But uh, tell the people where they can find you, find the, find the Discord, everything you're doing. Um, at Cave on MD, on, a, on everything, literally, I monopolize that username. It's mine. Uh, so it's at K-A-Y-V-A-N-M-D. Um, there's a link tree on all of those places where you can find the Discord. There's an open invite to anybody who wants to join. If you are an artist that wants to send in music for playlists or be a part of the community, all you got to do is just literally click the button, and it's free to join. There's no charges, no fees, none of that shit. Come join us on Twitch. I stream every Monday and Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. That's because I live in New York, so Mm -hmm. that's the time that works for me. Um, And, yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff, but playlists, everything, just send me music. I love to hear it. Awesome, awesome. And of course, you can follow us at Stay Busy Pod. Hit the YouTube channel, the button right here, patreon.com backslash Stay Busy Pod. Of course, if you want to follow me, you can at Armand Sather. But most importantly, make sure that you stay safe, stay humble, stay busy. Baby girl, baby girl, how you feeling? I've been out in the world, staying busy, taking time, getting right if you miss me. Girl, yeah. I've been out yeah, in the yeah. world, staying busy. Hey